What's going on guys? It's Camillo back again. <sighs> okay, so if you don't already know, I am a huge Apple fan and a lot of stuff happened in the world of Apple. I wanted to make this video to recap what happened during the event and also give you guys my thoughts of what was announced because oh my god, I was so hyped for this event. So the event took place in the new Steve Jobs Theater, which is, this is the first event ever held in this new theater on Apple's new campus. And let me tell you, this building looks amazing. All of Apple's stores, their campuses, like everything is, oh, the architecture is so beautiful. Apple started the event with going over their, their usual updates to their retail stores. They announced what retail stores are opening, what are they doing in the stores to make their customer service better. And then Apple started off the hardware announcements with the Apple Watch. So I didn't really expect them to announce a new Apple Watch this year because the Apple Watch I thought was on this kind of weird one and a half year cycle because between the first watch and the second watch, it was about 18 months and now it's about a year from the last Apple Watch. If you don't already know, I have the Apple Watch Series 2 and this year they announced the Apple Watch Series 3. There aren't that many differences between Apple Watch Series 3 and Apple Watch Series 2. The big difference is they're cellular in the Apple Watch. Finally, with cellular in your Apple Watch, you can now use your Apple Watch without your iPhone nearby, meaning that you could go leave your iPhone behind and you could basically do whatever you want to without your phone. You can stream music, you can take calls, you can make calls, you can write messages all without your phone. The watch is slightly more powerful, now allowing for Siri to talk back to you when you ask Siri questions. And you can even use Siri now without even your phone nearby because it has cellular. I'm not sure if I'm going to be buying Apple Watch Series 3. I do have Series 2. I might wait for the next version of the Apple Watch. Maybe they'll actually change up the design a little bit more because the Apple Watch Series 3 looks exactly the same as the Series 2 except there's now a red dot on the crown, which uh, I guess it's there to like show that it is an Apple Watch with cellular, but it's kind of it's kind of not that aesthetically pleasing. You can pre-order the Apple Watch Series 3 starting this Friday, September 15th, and then it will release on September 22nd starting at $399. Apple then moved on to announcing the Apple TV 4K. Now, I it's about time they actually did this. They now Apple TV supports 4K. Uh, they did a little demonstration of what 4K versus 4K HDR looks like, and we all know that 4K HDR is way superior than just standard 4K. HDR gives you way more vibrant colors. Yeah, it's about time that they announced this. Now, we get to the juicy part of this event. They finally talked about the iPhone. It's crazy to think the iPhone was launched 10 years ago. So Apple did announce the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. It has a slightly new design. Now, when I say slightly, it looks pretty much the same. It now comes in a new gold color and the back is made of glass now, which allows for wireless charging, one of the new features in the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. Mm, yeah, I've been wondering when Apple was going to introduce wireless charging into their devices, because a lot of Android smartphones are doing that now, and I think it's a pretty cool feature. I don't know how reliable it's gonna be, because sometimes like you put your phone down on a wireless charging mat and it doesn't connect. So I hoped, I hope, I hope the bugs are all worked out. Apple is also introducing a new portrait lighting mode, which is adding on to the portrait mode already found in the 7 Plus. If you don't know what the portrait mode is, it was basically a cool way to take pictures where it would use both cameras at the same time and you would get that nice blurring of the background so it would look like the picture was taken with a very nice DSLR. What portrait lighting mode does now, you can actually change the lighting on your subject. So you can have it look like it's shot in a studio, you can basically just swipe through different lighting effects. And I actually think this is really cool. It's making photography techniques usually only used by professional photographers and letting just everyday people use them. So I think it's an amazing feature. iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus also have upgraded processing power. That's always good. And I think they're upping the storage for the iPhone 8. So starting at 64 gigs and then 256 gigs. Well, actually, no, I thought that was kind of weird. So now what they're doing with storage is before it was 32, 128, and 256. Now they're just cutting out the 128. I really like the 128 because it's like that middle ground realm of space because now it's either 64 gig or 256 gig. I feel like that's a big jump right there. Anyway, you could pre-order the iPhone 8 starting Friday, November... 
not November. You pre-ordered the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus starting September 15th, releasing a week later from then, September 22nd. But that's not the big thing about this event. What really blew people away and what I was really waiting for was the announcement that one more thing, the iPhone 10. This is the iPhone I've always wanted. This, this iPhone is a massive step up from previous iPhones. No more do we have large bezels on your phone. The phone is now just a full screen. So now on the iPhone 10, you can have a larger screen than the iPhone 7 Plus or 6 Plus phones, but you actually get a smaller phone. I'm a really big fan of iPhone's plus size phones, but since the screen doesn't take up the whole phone, you have huge bezels and it just makes the phone like extremely large. But now that the screen is five, it's actually larger, it's 5.8 inches, but it's gonna have a smaller footprint, so it'll fit better in your hands. Another thing I'm really excited for is the screen is finally OLED. Thank you. There's really no comparison when you compare an LCD screen, like on the current iPhones, to an OLED screen. What OLED stands for is organic light emitting diode, meaning that each individual pixel can light up itself. So on a traditional LCD screen, you have your screen with all your pixels and then you have a backlight behind it. So all of the pixels have to be lit up at once to be able to see anything on the screen. But with OLED, the screen, each pixel is lit up individually. So you can get infinite contrast on an OLED screen. So that means you get deeper blacks and it's just a way more vibrant screen. I can't wait to see it in person. But you may be thinking to yourself, if the screen takes up the whole front of the phone, where's the Touch ID? Where's the home button? Well, no more home button and no more Touch ID, but to unlock your phone now, now you use Face ID. So Apple was saying that using your face to unlock your phone is way more secure than using your fingerprint. There's about a one in a million chance that somebody else has the exact same face as you. So that's pretty good odds if you want, if you don't want people in your phone. And they assured that the unlocking your phone with your face is pretty seamless. It's not like you actually have to, oh, man, hold, I'm hitting you in the mic, that you don't have to hold up the phone straight up. You can pretty much just look at it and it will unlock. And it is pretty dynamic. You can actually change up your hairstyle. You can change, put on a hat, grow facial hair, and it will adapt to your face. Face ID can also be used for Apple Pay. You just hold your phone up to your face and then use Apple Pay. We're living in the future right now. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of cool. Using your face to unlock your phone, use it to pay for things. But this new face tracking software also allows for the coolest thing announced, Animoji. So basically what Animoji is, you can take any of the emojis and let the iPhone track your face and that emoji will have that facial expression. You can do it for stills. So just make a face and the emoji will have that facial expression you just did. Or you can record a message and you could basically be chicken, you could be a unicorn, you could be a dragon. Like, like this is what I came here for. Like, what, this is 2017. Like, I've always wanted to be my spirit animal, the poo emoji. So just like with the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus, the iPhone 10 also has the new portrait lighting modes. But this time, the iPhone 10 can also do all of the portrait lighting modes on the front facing camera as well. So that means you'll be able to take portrait mode selfies, which is gonna step up your selfie game a lot. iPhone 10 also supports the wireless charging, which I'm very excited to actually use. I haven't had a, well, I guess I've only had iPhone since the iPhone 5, but I haven't had a phone that's been able to do wireless charging. So I, ho I hope it works out nice. Yeah, and basically everything about this phone, the processor, a lot faster. I'm just, I'm so hyped for this phone. Like, this is like the phone I've always wanted. But the bummer about the iPhone 10 is you can't pre-order it until October 27th and it's available November 3rd. And that's a long ways away from the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus is released. I really say if you have an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, there's really no point in getting the iPhone 8. It's basically the same thing. It's just made of glass now and it can like wireless charge. So if you have a phone lower than the iPhone 7, I would say maybe get the 8 if you're not interested in all the new cool features in the iPhone 10. But if you have an iPhone 7 and you do want to upgrade, I would say go for the iPhone 10. It is more expensive. It's about like $200 more expensive than the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but there is a lot more features involved in the iPhone 10 than the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. 
You can totally expect from me an iPhone 10 unboxing. I haven't decided on the Apple Watch Series 3 yet. Like, it's really cool and I want to be able to use my Apple Watch without my phone around. Because when you walk away from your phone with this watch, it's basically, it can't really do anything. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the new iPhones announced, the new Apple Watch, the Apple TV, whatever you enjoyed from this Apple event. Oh, and let me know if you're going to get any of these new iPhones announced, or if you don't have an iPhone, what phone do you have, or what phone are you excited for this year? If you like the video, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up down below. And if you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I post a lot of different kinds of videos on my channel, so be sure to click around. I have some tech videos, some Nintendo gaming videos, and as well as I live stream a lot. I've been actually streaming almost every day now, I uh, stream a lot of Nintendo games every day except Wednesday and I'll see you guys in my next video. Camillo out.